This is going to be a fun video. This amp that fits in the palm of your hand, can it possibly power these four 12 inch subs? Let's find out. In previous videos, I've tested really small amplifiers, including this 160 watt tar amps, also this 400 watt sound digital. But today we're gonna to look at a four channel sound digital, the Evo 400.4, which at the time of this video was $80 on Amazon. Now I went to the Sound Digital USA website and I can't find this model. I even looked through the old discontinued models to see maybe, hey, maybe it's one that's been discontinued and they're just selling them old on Amazon, but it's not there. So on the main Sound Digital site, I did find it. And it said, product line not sold in the United States. Hmm. So I'm not sure this is a flea market or a gray market situation, but we're gonna find out. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Well, the amp has arrived from Amazon. It is the Evo 4.0. So it does appear to be the one that's not supposed to be available in the US. Now the 4.0 does have some additional features like having crossovers and also having individual connections for the speaker terminals which will show that here in the box though you get the manual and you get a sound digital sticker and you get the amp that's pretty much it of course the amp is shrink wrapped let's get the shrink wrap off and we'll take a closer look at the amp but right off the bat you can tell this is a tiny tiny amplifier here compared to an iphone it's like yo this thing will fit in your pocket easily here on one side, you can see four RCA inputs. You can also see crossover controls and gain controls. It's like two separate amps here. So you can control channels one and two and also channels three and four. On the opposite side, we have eight gauge terminals for power and ground. And then we have about 12 gauge for all the speaker terminals and also for the remote connection. And again, these are all individual connections you don't have to put the positive and negatives together like you do on some of the other small amps. This amp is a four channel, but it is bridgeable down to three or two channels as well. And you do need a 1.5 millimeter Allen key and is not included. So make sure you have one of these on hand so that you can tighten down all the terminals. At least they're all the same size, but this 1.5 millimeter is tiny. Speaking of tiny, the amplifier here in the palm of my hand measures 4.5 inches on the long side, 4.2 inches for the width, and about two inches on the height. Power ratings include 66 watts per channel times four at four ohms, 100 watts per channel times four at two ohms, or 200 by two bridged at four ohms. Enough of that blah blah, let's get to the fun part. Let's get the amp hooked up. You can see we have all the channels hooked up. We'll power it up. It is running the dyno for two channels and running resistors on the other two channels. So we'll make sure that we have the amp completely loaded when we do all these tests. On the left, you'll notice power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, we show the voltage of the dyno. Again, these are resistive tests using the amp dyno. Also, you'll see the remote clamp display so we can measure efficiency. Also, don't worry, we are gonna show this amp powering the kicker quad box. Just have to stick around to after the amp dyno test and let's see if we'll be amazed. First off, let's start with a four ohm, four channel test rated 66 watts by four at 14.4 volts. Here is the test, one kilohertz signal going in and not quite there, right about 60 watts per channel at 14.26. That's like, you know, very small percentage away from being right at the rated power. What about uncertified, which takes us up to the clipping point of the amp? Exactly the same, 60 and 59 at 14.24. Again, we're a couple tenths away from the 14.4, so we're gonna give it a pass. Dynamically though, it's interesting. The amp actually did less power dynamically, around 54 watts per channel at 14.28. What about the efficiency? We measured about 83% efficiency at four ohms in the four channel mode. Now let's uh, wire it for the two ohm four channel mode. Again, we have all the channels hooked up at two ohms. Let's try certified test first, a 1% distortion rated 100 watts by four 
and we're right at it. I mean, 99 watts per channel for the average there, right at it at one kilohertz. Uncertified up to the clipping point. Let's see if we get a little more power. Virtually the same. 100 watts on channel one, 102 on channel two, so we'll say 101 average. What about dynamic pulse? Can we get a little more? And look at this. In this test, that actually does go over the rated power. So that's interesting. Our voltage is just a little bit high at 14 and a half, but we got 106 watts per channel. Efficiency we measured around 84%, so literally almost exactly the same that it was at four ohms. Now we're gonna bridge the amplifier and notice how we have this connected up. It's the outer terminals is how you bridge it and just make sure you have the positive and negative correctly because they kind of have them backwards the way most amps are. Most of them start with positive and end with negative. Four ohms bridged two channels, rated 200 watts by two. Again, we're running the one kilohertz signal here into the amp. And we notice something a little weird here. Notice that channel one kind of stops around 130 watts and it jumped up to 160. Not really sure what's going on there because we'll see here in the uncertified test up to clipping, it doesn't slow down, it doesn't stop. I tried switching the RCAs, I tried everything to ensure that it was nothing with my input or nothing like that that caused the problem, but just apparently there was something with the amp with that certified test on that first channel. But dynamically, you can see we got 206 watts average, 208 up 209 and 205. Now we weren't able to show the efficiency, unfortunately, because we didn't get a clean measurement there at the four ohms bridge. But here are all the results from the stereo or four channel test and also the bridge test. And you can see pretty much the only one that didn't do rated was the certified test at four ohms bridge. All right, friends, we have this little sound digital 400.4 EVO. You can see the wires coming out. I'm gonna show you, there's no trickery going on here. Let's follow the wires going into the back of the quad box. And we have the amp bridged, and this quad box is two ohms per size. That's actually two ohms bridge, which is not recommended for the uh, sound digital. But I figure this is a fun video, so let's try it and see how it pushes these 412s. What well, do you say we try the woofer test? It just doesn't seem right that an amp this small can actually push four 12 inch subs. I know, kind of blew my mind, but let's try it with mids and highs and see how it sounds. Once again, just to show no trickery, we're gonna try this amp with mids and highs, which is probably where it better lies. So here you can see speaker connectors, speaker wiring coming out, going into the back. ELAC number one, ELAC number two. So let's try some SQ, see how it sounds. Just hanging out the lounge with Smokey. some vocals with ice and fire. So what would I say overall? I mean, it sounded good. It was not excellent, but it wasn't bad. Like it didn't hurt my ears, but I could tell there were a little bit of deficiencies there in some of the ranges, but overall not too bad for as tiny as this amp is. Now, we did show the thermals here once we after we did all the testing and did the speaker testing as well. You can see almost 150 degrees Fahrenheit right here at some parts of the amp, so it did get kind of hot. 
Now let's get out the torque screwdriver and remove some screws and see what's inside this tiny amp. After the removal of about 172 screws, we can get inside the amp by sliding it out here of the chassis. And here you can see this tiny amplifier. Check out those little capacitors there. Also, you can see the RCA jacks on this side. That's just a little standoff there on the bottom, just a little rubber standoff so it doesn't touch metal. Here are all the parts that, uh, yeah, that's what the amp is made of. See everything we had to take apart to get inside. Smash me a thumbs up if you like to see this. These caps, again, it's hard to tell how small this is, so I tried to get of a reference here with a dime. Just look at that. Look how small those capacitors are. But let's move on to the pros and cons. Things I like, things I think could be better, at least things to be aware of. Obviously, tiny size. You can hide it anywhere. Pretty much made rated power. Sound quality was decent. I wouldn't call it excellent, but hey, sounds okay. Easy connections. Very easy to hook it up. It does have high pass and low pass crossovers at 80 hertz. Things to consider, it needs four channel input. Again, the crossovers are fixed at 80 hertz, they're not variable. There's no built-in fuses. The amp got really hot. And is it a gray market item? What does that mean for your warranty? Hmm, not sure, we'll have to ask Sound Digital about that. So overall, the amp put out its power for the most part, sounded okay, was relatively reasonably priced too, so seems like a win to me. Check links in the video description if you'd like to pick one up. Till next time, this big D, I'm out of here. I got the AMM1 hooked up to the quad box here. This is one of the two channels though, so you have to multiply it times two to get the total power output. But I want to try this woofer test again, see how much power we're putting out. So here we go. One more quick extra for those who stuck around to the end. We're going to try the amp bridged, uncertified, one kilohertz. Roll that beautiful bean footage and check it out. Oh, over 300 watts. 14.24. That is insanity.